G'day, I'm Mark from Salsa Vision Me, and this unique way of preserving tomatoes is amazing. Let's get into it. I was meaning to put this video on my sub channel, Self Sufficient Me 2, but I decided to release it on my main channel because so many of you here requested this recipe. So I saved half of one jar for this video, which wasn't easy because we wanted to eat it, especially after using these tomatoes on our 21 days eating only what we could grow experiment. I love the tomatoes. Making sure, although you had those fermented tomatoes, which I loved um, in that garlic. But yeah, I saved what was left for this video, but also just to see how long it would last because I hadn't done these before. And from the packing or the fermenting stage to now is almost 11 months, nearly a year. There are three main reasons why you would want to store tomatoes like this. Preserving a glut of tomatoes, the whole point of preserving is to keep food longer than it would naturally. You grow a ton of tomatoes and you can't possibly eat them all, so you preserve the excess to consume later, often at a time when tomatoes are not in season. Taste. This tastes amazing. It's unique and it's not just another method of storing them. It's a way to enhance the taste so that it retains the unprocessed freshness of a tomato but with the enhanced infused flavors combined with the old fermented pickle flavor. We'll do a taste test on some sourdough bread, like a kind of bruschetta towards the end of this video. And the last one is health, particularly gut health. Humans have a live gut with millions of bacteria helping us to break down and process food into nutrients our body needs. When we get sick or use medication or don't eat a balanced diet, these bacteria die out, making it harder for us to digest foods, fight bad bacteria, and affecting our good health overall. Eating this type of fermented food inoculates our gut with the good bacteria. I know it doesn't sound very nice, but it's just the way our bodies work. And this good bacteria helps our inner health. Now let's get stuck into the recipe. How you make this is dead set easy as. Get some tomatoes, the medium or cherry sized ones are best. Give them a wash if needed and also I remove the hard stem end, but you might not need to with cherry tomatoes. You'll also need some mason jars or equivalent that can be used for fermentation. With the standard fermenting kit, a lid with a hole and rubber grommet so an airlock can be inserted. This just ensures carbon dioxide can escape during the fermentation process but oxygen can't get into the mixture. Place a few cloves of garlic and some basil in the base of the jar along with some distilled water or spring water free from any fluoride or chemicals as this might affect the development of the lactobacteria. Then add one tablespoon of fine sea salt per one litre or quart size jar, or you can do it the other way around and just add the salt first before the water, or just mix the salt and water before you add the garlic and basil. In other words, you can't stuff this up. As long as the salt is dissolved in the mix, it doesn't matter. Pack the tomatoes into the jar, leaving a small gap at the top and I like to weigh the tomatoes down to keep them under the liquid as this reduces the chance of mold developing or the mix going rancid. There are various types of weights or inserts that you can get that will help keep your fermenting food submerged. Place the lid on along with some water in the airlock and then sit it on the kitchen bench or in the pantry or in a cellar etc where the temperature remains constant between about 10 to 25 degrees Celsius. After a few days, your tomatoes should be bubbling away going through the fermenting process. In about two to four weeks, they should be ready. You can taste test to see how they are going after the two week mark. And if ready, they should be soft in texture, have a rich tomato taste with a nice salty sourness infused with that garlic and basil. Don't worry too much about mold or discoloration or that cloudiness through the tomatoes, a bit of whiteness here and there. That won't affect anything. Trust your taste and your nose. If you take the top off and it smells awful and rancid, my boys have just come home from school. 
so you'll get a little bit of extra noise in the background no doubt but if it smells awful well then it's probably no good and obviously if you've got a big green buildup of mold something has gone wrong but a little bit of white floaties and that's not a problem once the fermenting process is done you can store them in the fridge you can use a proper lid because the airlock is no longer required and storing it in the fridge will halt the fermentation process and they should keep for many months to be used as you wish and you can make a lot of things out of these tomatoes we made a cornbread biscuit salad homemade cornbread from our own cornmeal mixed with some coriander salad and balsamic vinegar these tomatoes also work well as a base for a vegetable curry just add it like you would to cook any sauce based dish pasta would be another good example and let's now do a taste test on it in real time and so i can show you how another use for it which is to make a sourdough bruschetta i've got to toast this first so give me a sec okay while that's toasting let's just tip these out that's why i've got this tray here so that i don't make a big mess i've still got the weight in here but it's fallen through because what happens is when the tomatoes just get a bit mushy that weight falls through but the job's done anyway it's kept them under the liquid and once it's in the fridge it doesn't matter i probably could have removed the weight long ago there we go it looks like a bit of a soup doesn't it these bits here are just bits of basil, not mold or anything, just soft basil leaves. Oh, did you hear that? That's the toast. Okay, gonna just use this. I think one should be enough, but we'll see. Put it on the plate and you can peel the skin. You can eat the skin if you want. But I'm gonna peel the skin off. Very soft they are. And I'll make sure this toast doesn't get wet. But you can see how red that is. Red and, and beautiful colour. It just smells so garlicky. Put it on there. And just spread it out like that. Look at it. It's like a paste. My goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. Let's just add a little bit of this basil. Now there's no need to add really anything else to this. You know how pure Italian bruschetta would have garlic rubbed on it first. Well, you've got garlic infused with this already and you actually have basil infused with it too. But I've just sprinkled that little bit of basil leaf over the top to give it that little bit of don't do too much basil on him but you could chop up onion or whatever and mix it in but i think just like this is perfect all right let's dig in and have a taste oh oh wow i could have drizzled some olive oil over this but i don't think it even needs that because the the taste is so intense the saltiness the tomato paste type taste but it's a freshness about it it's not like uh, i cook tomato paste it's hard to describe but you've got to give this a go if you have never tried fermenting tomatoes like this this is something really new and exciting for us especially i mean yeah it, you know it's good for you but it you just do it for the any pasto taste for the you know people will be saying to you how would you make this? What is this? This is the best bruschetta I've ever tasted. You know? Oh. Mmm. Wow. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. <clears throat> give it a go. I hope I've convinced you to give this a go. I've got to stop eating this in front of you because that's just rude. And also, you don't want to hear me slopping around but oh, what a beautiful wonderful way to eat this type of fermented food fermented tomatoes get into it well i hope you enjoyed this video as much as i enjoyed eating it if you did make sure you give it a big red fermented 
tomato thumbs up and share the video around subscribe if you haven't already and look i know i'm going back into this but you've got to give this a go this is incredible this is so different yet beautiful yeah give it a crack and write your comment down below if you have any ideas or different ideas on how you might want to use this type of fermented recipe but it is a cracker of a dish yeah thanks a lot for watching bye for now